Greetings and welcome back to the workshop. Thank you for joining us and I hope you're all doing really well. A big thank you to everybody who clicked the subscribe button in the last video. There was quite a few of you that joined the journey. Big thank you and one of you has taken the time to binge watch the entire steam engine build which is absolutely crazy but thank you very much. Welcome aboard, enjoy the uh, journey with us. Now out and about and I also noticed in the comments that people were asking about the lack of videos and it was good to see me back in the workshop. Now I've got to admit that the video that I did last was made earlier on in the year, pretty much around the same time as the video about the new toys in the workshop. And all the stuff that I said in the 2024 video seems to have not really materialised. Well, I have been in the workshop, do not fret, but the job that I've been doing has been taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I've also been working on some other projects, one of them being a steam engine for my club, and the other one being the business that I need to earn money by, because unfortunately I don't make the money through the YouTube like these bigger channels. Sometimes I've got to go do the proper work and not muck about with my lovely machines, which I do prefer doing. So what is the project that I've been on with? Well, it has been the steam engine and I got entirely frustrated with it and sort of had a bit of an accident. Well, not so much an accident. I ripped it apart. Yep. I totally stripped it apart because if you remember last year we had a very humid start to the summer which made all the steam engine parts that weren't painted go rusty which was all of it so i decided in my infinite wisdom just to get the thing stripped down cleaned up and painted and no i wasn't going to film it because who wants to see me cleaning and sanding and painting it was enough doing the job so I stripped the frames down because we needed to do a few bits and pieces and I thought it was going to be the easiest way. I was going to take the whole lot and get it sandblasted and I thought, well, no, I'll do it myself. And it just took a long time. I realised that there were several things that I'd not done on the steam engine that needed doing. There were little bits and pieces that I thought, well, I could do that later. I can do it together. And then I can't. You can't do it. One thing that people did question about was me showing the cylinders mounted to the frames. They were like, well, how come we've not seen it? Well, there was nothing to mount the cylinders to the frames. There were no holes. There was nothing. So I have put all that in. I worked out where all the holes needed to be, the holes to bolt the cylinders to the frames and the holes for the inlet and the outlet. I put all those in. And there were other bits and pieces that I'll show you in a minute, which I've done. I stripped all the little pieces down and I'm actually still in the process of painting some of it. Uh, I've done a lot of the little pieces. They were stripped down. A lot of the parts are made from black mild steel. They've got scale on. So I chucked them all in a big tub of brick acid and it was left about half an hour, 40 minutes. Uh, I then checked it to make, to see if the scale was coming off because brick acid which is um, hydrochloric acid, if I remember correctly, gets black scale off mild steel. Like I say, after about half an hour, give it a bit of a scrape, and yes, the black's coming off. Some of them I flicked over, turned over, take them out of the uh, brick acid, wash them with soapy water to get any of the brick acid off because it'll just keep eating, and then dry it off, quick sand, get some etching primer on it, then put some primer on it and then a top coat. A lot of the parts have been wrapped up, stored out of the way because obviously there's a lot of parts and as I say, there's still bits that I've not done. There are still bits I'm working on, but most importantly, after a very long time, well, it's actually months of work and obviously I have been working on the business as well. I've not been just 
working on the frames for months and months and months. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, which means we can get back to filming. So the frames, they kind of look a little bit different to when you last saw them. Last time you saw them, it was a bit more complete um, and it was a bit more rustier. So here is what the frames look like right now. These have been completely stripped down to all the individual components. It has been absolutely cleaned within an inch of its life. All the black has been taken off the frames and I tell you, that was a chore. That was a tough job and hindsight, probably should have got it sandblasted, but there's no money in the pot to go and get it sandblasted. So I ended up doing it by hand because obviously I've got nothing big enough to put these big frames in the brick acid. And I went through a lot of sanding pads. Well, it wasn't sanding pads. I will show you what pads they are. They are, uh, they're called strip discs. So these are the strip discs that I use to clean the frames up. They're only off Amazon. I think it was like 10 for 20 quid or something. I'll try and put the uh, link in the description. They're not the best ones I've used in the world, but for the job they were doing, they did all right. They were quite good. And they are pretty good at getting black off. And they're really good for getting paint off but in some instances they'll get black off. All the bits have been etch primed and then put back together again. And then I started doing the top coats, the primer, the black, the whole works. Second coat of black and it's satin black. I've not gone for gloss because I don't like gloss on chassis. I like them to have that, just a little bit of shine, but not matte, Do you know what I mean? It looks quite, I think it looks nice. There's still bits that I've missed, I know that. So it needs another coat. The areas around where the axle boxes or the take up bearings will sit they have masking tape there so that if there's any brown that you can see it's literally it's masking tape and all this top piece here is um masked up because that's where all the top plates are going and i don't really see the point of painting that black so underneath that it's etch primed front still need to go red i think it looks totally different i think it looks absolutely amazing it doesn't half look big now it's painted which is a bit of a concern moving forward once we get <coughs> boiler and the body it's going to take up a lot of space in here yeah we're, we're moving on the project has moved forward so all i've got to do now is finish painting bits and pieces that i've got left to do which the wheels are nearly painted I've got one, one set to do. There's the pony truck to paint, but not the small components are all done, but the main part of the pony truck, that still needs to be painted. Uh, well, I still need to, I've got to go and get that sandblasted at the club because it will fit in the club's sandblaster. The brake gear needs, which is down there. Uh, we're going to slightly modify that, but some of it's painted, but the bits that I'm going to modify are not painted. Nothing major, it's not going to make much uh, difference to the local, it's just following the drawings more accurately. Also will help put it back together again. So we'll do some bits, bits and pieces with that. Now, going forward to the, I've made modifications. Obviously the main area was for the cylinders. As this has strayed so far from the drawings, like we all like to do, we all like to do that. I'd found some little snags. One of them was at the positioning of the cylinders. I found I've had to move the cylinders forward from the original drawing. One modification that I wasn't going to tell you, but I'm going to, is I've actually extended the front. It's been extended a little bit. I'll not tell you how much, but it has been extended by a bit to move the cylinders right to move the cylinders forward. I then found that I needed to step the cylinders out. You can see here that I have put some plates on, and a quick test shows that it all clears very nicely. Something that I hugely forgot about was the mounting for the running boards at the front and the rear. So I've made all the pieces to go here and put all the bolt holes in. One big thing off the list. And the other thing was where the coupling goes, which you can see down there. I've put all the holes in for that, front and rear. As I mentioned, there's the boiler. I've put in extra holes on the frames, front where the smoke box goes, 
and rear where the firebox goes or roughly where they go because I don't really know until we get the boiler here exactly where it's going to sit. So I've put extra holes in but we've got something to support the smoke box and something to support the ash pan and all that sort of area. Figure out where all that goes when we get the boiler. And if you're wondering how many cans of paint did you use? Because I don't own a air sprayer so uh, I had to use cans of paint and it took um, took a couple of cans. This PMA stuff, that's pretty good. The etch primer, it's a pretty good one. Very strong. Make sure that when you're painting, obviously wear a mask. Safety equipment, ventilate the room and whatnot. Please be safe when you're painting. That is where the project is. That is where we are at currently with the steam engine. Now it's reached this stage, hopefully we can crack on with the other bits and pieces. I can crack on putting this back together again, which I'll try and do some little bits of videos and stuff. I'll do some videos of the modifications that I'm going to be doing to so the brakes, but that's not going to be much. It'll probably be included in the putting it back together. And then we can crack on with the cylinders because that's where I want to get back to. I want to get back to the cylinders. I want to get them finished. Um, we're not far off being able to bolt them to the loco because obviously we've got the main bodies. I might put all the gaskets on so they can go on i've started the glands i'm just basically letting you know where we're at um i've started the glands i need to finish those off and finish the video off of that because i've already started a video on that one then we've got the pistons piston rods which believe it or not the piston rods are actually here that's the stainless rod for the pistons um and the other rod that's the valve valve rod so we've got everything for that we need to make a cross head or do a casting for a cross head we need to hurry up because the big bit in the middle that makes it go chuff chuff the boiler could be here in the next couple of months so i need to pull my finger out and get a bit quick get a bit further on i don't think i'm going to have it on air by then because there's just so much to do We've got all the rod, all the valve gear to do yet. We've got the coupling rods. We've got the connecting rods to the pistons to do. We've got all the slide bars. We've got all the mountings for that. But that's the other thing with this as well, is there's still going to be holes to put in. There's still going to be stuff to bolt to this. So I am expecting marks and scratches and stuff. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, why didn't I wait till the end of the build to do this? But I prefer to deal with little bits and pieces painting wise than to strip the whole loco completely down once it's built to then paint it all because even just taking this apart it's a horrible feeling it really is it may it, it it's like going it is going backwards we went backwards we went all the way back to the beginning to get a bit further in the build and it's it just you just kind of think oh what's the point it's all in pieces it's spread across the workshop which it which it really was it would have spread everywhere. There's bits all over the place. But now, now it's done, it, I think it looks amazing. I really do. And that's why we've not had any videos. Because I've been dealing with this. It's currently the 28th of June. And hopefully, if all things go well, I will be going out and about to some, do some filming on some railways. I apologise that the videos have been very... There's been a big gap. I apologise. Um, hopefully you can understand the amount of work that I've done in there to get the frames done. But long term, I think it's going to help us move forward a lot quicker. Bizarrely. So I have been in the workshop. I've been working very hard for that for you. Well, for me and you. Like I said, big thank you to all those that subscribed. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this YouTube channel back on track. Eh? Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen and all that lot and you haven't already subscribed, I know I said I'd stop doing that, but YouTube really loves it. So don't forget to hit the like button. If you're that one guy who hits the dislike button, you're making no difference to the channel. People still enjoy this. I still enjoy doing it. I'm still enjoying making the videos. I'm still enjoying making the build. And if you're that one person, then you're really sad. And to everybody who clicks the like button, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. I will see you soon, hopefully. Hopefully it won't be months uh, for the next video. Um, stay safe. Laters.
Yeah, I did that wrong. We also need to tidy the workshop up a bit and do a bit of moving around. Because I may have bought another machine. 